Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Collins and I'm a lecturer in musicology at the UWA Conservatorium of Music. I'm here to give you a brief historical overview of the history of the symphony to help you study for your ATAR music exam. Now while you'll need to know specific information about your set works, you'll also need to know about how the symphony developed from its origins in the 18th century up until the 21st century. For those of you wanting to learn about the development of the concerto, my colleague Cecilia Sun has two excellent videos which trace the development of this form. Those videos are linked in the video description below. So firstly, what is a symphony? Well, that depends. In the middle of the 18th century, century we probably define it as a large-scale work in four movements for orchestra. However, that quickly changes. Beethoven added a choir to his final symphony, which was composed in the early 1820s, and it's doubtful that 18th century composers would recognise Webern's symphony, written in 1928, as the same form. Of course, like in all other Western art music, the harmonic language and compositional techniques used in symphonies also changed over time. To help us understand the major changes in the symphony, let's look at four key aspects of the form. The first is instrumentation, or the instruments that are used in each piece. Secondly is the number of movements and the general length of the symphony. Thirdly, we will consider the form of the movements. And then finally, we will look at program symphonies and symphonies without a program or without a story or image underpinning the music. So firstly, let's look at instrumentation. So-called classical period symphonies are mostly written for strings and only a small number of wind and brass instruments. Let's have a look at the score for Haydn's 94th Symphony, which is, has been nicknamed the Surprise Symphony. You can see it features a full string section for the first and second violins, violas, cellos and double basses. Haydn adds some wind instruments, flutes, oboes, bassoons, horns and trumpets, and also two timpani to the strings. In some other classical symphonies, there are less winds and brass. Mozart's 25th symphony only uses oboes, bassoons and horns. By the end of the classical period, symphonies are generally written for strings with two flutes, oboes, clarinets and bassoons. That's two flutes, two oboes, two clarinets, two bassoons, what we call double winds, and two horns and trumpets. Generally, the only percussion was the timpani. The Romantic period is tricky to define because we have some composers who are um, progressive and are writing with new structures and ideas, while others are more traditional and staying closer to the formulas of Haydn and Mozart. Schumann's symphonies are more traditional. In his third symphony, we can see the strings are still there and the double winds, but we have a larger brass section now including trombones and four horns. In the Romantic period, we start to see the brass family get much larger in the symphony. Composers also sometimes added different woodwind instruments to their symphonies. Berlioz, a fairly progressive composer, wrote his famous Symphony Fantastique during this same time period. His orchestra includes an E-flat clarinet, the smaller and higher version of the clarinet, and the carongle, or English horn, a larger cousin of the oboe. He also includes a number of extra percussion instruments, including cymbals, snare drum, bass drum, and chimes. What is important to know is that both these things are happening at the same time. Berlioz's progressive Symphony Fantastique was first performed in 1830, and yet Schumann's more traditional Third Symphony was first performed in 1850. But in general, for the 19th century or Romantic period symphonies, you're looking to see if there is a full brass family and sometimes a few extra percussion instruments. When we reach the 20th century, things get even more complicated. Some composers started to write works for very large orchestras. Mahler's Eighth Symphony, nicknamed the Symphony of a Thousand, includes 21 winds, 24 brass, a large percussion section, and multiple SATB choirs. Although you can also find in earlier symphonies, um, earlier symphonies with a choir, of course, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony includes vocal soloists and an SATB choir, even in the 1820s. In comparison, others in the 20th century wrote for smaller chamber-like groups as a throwback to the classical period. This type of music is generally classed as neoclassical, and you can ask your teacher for more information on this style and how it fits in the 20th century. Prokofiev's First Symphony, nicknamed Classical Symphony, features the same instrumentation as the classical period symphony 
yet it was composed around 1916 and 1917. Let's now look at the number of movements and length of symphonies. At the beginning of the classical period, symphonies tended to have three movements, but quickly this developed into four movement structures. In order, fast, slow, dance movement, fast. Sometimes the first movement would start with a slow introduction. Haydn used this often. Listen to his 104th symphony for an example. Each movement was separate, although Beethoven started to change this. In his fifth symphony, he joins the third and fourth movements together. And his sixth symphony, the Pastoral Symphony, also had five movements but we'll come back to this particular symphony later. Classical symphonies were relatively short. Most were between 25 to 40 minutes in length, with the first movement being the longest. The Romantic period continues the same pathway for progressives and traditionalists. Composers such as Brahms and Schubert continue to use four movements in the fast, slow, medium, fast model, while composers like Berlioz and Tchaikovsky began changing the number of movements and their order. Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony has a fast, uplifting march as its third movement, and then finishes with a slow and solemn ten-minute fourth movement. Berlioz's Symphony Fantastics has five movements. The length of these Romantic period symphonies tended to get longer. Most lasted at least 40 minutes, and Mahler's Second Symphony lasts about 90 minutes. In the 20th century, we once again have the extremities. Composers such as Shostakovich continue to expand and change the structure of the symphony. His fifth symphony does have four movements, but starts with 16, a 16 minute first movement, but it's mostly slow and intense. For one of the strangest symphony structures, listen to Messiaen's, Messiaen's Turingalia Symphony. It's 10 movements and lasts 80 minutes. However, we can compare this back to Prokofiev's classical symphony that we discussed before. It has four movements and lasts about 20 minutes. So the 20th century is definitely a period of extremes. So that's where we'll leave off for this first video. In the next video, I'll cover form and program music. If you study at UWA, you can do as little as one unit or a complete degree in music. You can learn an instrument, have one-on-one -on -one violin lessons, write music using software like Ableton, or even learn the ukulele. If you prefer looking at the academic side of music, we have a large range of units in theory, oral skills, and music history, which can be studied as part of uh, any undergraduate degree at UWA. For more details, head to our website, which is linked in the description below, and best of luck for your ATAR music studies this year.